Hello there. How's it going today? Just one sec here. Cool. All right. So I am going to do uh, this quick little video here just to um, kind of go over how to add some external like blog post links to, to my own portfolio site. I, uh, I had a, this is like, I'm humble bragging right now here, but I had a, a, an article published to CSS tricks, which is like super cool life goal of mine. And I wanted to be able to, uh, showcase that on my, on my own site, on my own blog. Um, and I was kind of trying to think through how I can do that. So my blog, my personal blog is just a, uh, a Gatsby site, um, super basic. I'm, I'm using, um, uh, a CSS framework just because I needed to redesign my site and didn't have a lot of time to actually do, uh, the redesign itself. So that's why there's all of these, uh, unfortunate looking class names, but we're just going to ignore that for now. Uh, in any case, the, um, goal of this here is just to have some, uh, fairly easily controlled, um, blog post links uh, that I can just drop into my site using the same markdown um, kind of format that I'm using here in Gatsby right now uh, and pretty much just like control all of this with the front matter in the in the markdown files uh, just like a quick little rundown of how my Gatsby site is working right now um, I'm using GraphQL to query all of the uh, all of the markdown files in my posts folder over here on the left and uh there's a couple of um like setup steps or whatever that needs to happen on your gatsby site to to do this but i'm not going to go over that right now i'm just going to kind of like talk through how i uh want to add these these links so just a super specific kind of little quick uh stream here today uh so in any case, let's look at a, just like a normal post. Most of what I want to do is pretty much just like have a blank post, like a blank markdown file that I can drop into this post folder and then add some extra um, front matter here too that I can then query for and then change the, uh, uh, change the output on my actual homepage, which is where my, my actual posts and everything are output, um, change the markup here to, instead of linking to an internal, uh, post, which I'm doing here through the, um, through the, through the slug that gets generated, um, from the, uh, from the markdown files, I pretty much want to be able to just have some options in here. That's like, hey, here's the here's the URL. The layout for this post is going to be the thing that I uh, detect. So if the layout is, for example, like like post external or something like that, I can check to see what the layout is, and then adjust the output on my homepage uh, from there. So let's let's just kind of do that real quick. Let me create a new markdown file. Uh, let me just copy. The titles on these markdown files are generally very long. Uh, and that's probably my fault just because I make my blog post titles so, so long. Uh, so I wrote it out elsewhere so I could just copy and paste it real quick. Uh, so the, the, the blog post that I made on CSS tricks is called the many ways to include CSS in JavaScript applications. Uh, so I'm just going to essentially take that title and then, um, uh, file name a it, uh, with dashes instead of spaces. And then, uh, the way that the, I, I converted my, my site from Jekyll to Gatsby and I wanted to maintain the uh, yeah, the file naming conventions that Jekyll adhered to so that I could just essentially port all of my old posts to this new format. Um, so that's why the date is here at the beginning and then the title and then the, you know, markdown 
file type. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to essentially mirror exactly what this name is uh, on my site. And it creates a markdown file. And then in here, we're just going to add oops, some front matter. So like I said, we'll do layout post external. Um, that way we can detect from these marked out from these posts essentially what type of post this is a uh, couple other things that we'll definitely need we'll need a url so the url to the actual um, external blog post itself uh, we'll go with there's going to need to be a title there's going to need to be a date there's going to need to be uh, what else is in here Categories, which I don't actually use, but just to keep things consistent. Categories, update, plural, cool. Uh, let me just copy and paste the date formatting here. Uh, this was posted on July 8th. And I don't really mess with the actual like time of day timestamp there. Uh, and then the title, we'll just copy and paste straight from CSS Tricks, if I can actually grab that. There we go. Cool. Um, one other thing that I will likely want is a, uh, like the publisher, like who actually published it, so that on the, on the front end of my site, we can actually say like, this post was posted on, you know, July 8th, 2019 on CSS tricks, for example. So we'll just publisher CSS tricks. And that should, that should really be all. So we don't want like these, these normal blog posts here and everything. We don't want any content. Um, there's not going to be a page on my site that re uh, reposts all of this content. I'm just going to be linking directly to the CSX CSS tricks article itself. Um, so this should literally be all that we need. Um, let me go ahead and do an NPM run dev. Is that the actual? No, oh, it's developed up. Do, do, do. We'll get that started up so that we can actually look at what my site looks like. All right, it's at 8,000. Local host, 8,000. Cool. Okay, so we can see here already that um, Gatsby compiled everything, uh, converted it down to flat files and uh, is outputting this post. If we click on it, there's not going to be any content in here. It's directing to an actual post on my site, and that is not what we want. And the reason it's doing that is because within the index.js, um, which is just my home page, you can see we're, we're using like normal Gatsby routing. Um, let me widen that just a little bit. We'll cover the front end um you can see that this this link here we're just using normal like gatsby routing to um direct to these posts right uh it's grabbing the slug that is generated by gatsby and then outputting a link that'll uh route us to that single post page uh what we're gonna want to do instead is detect the post layout right um, and based off of that output, just a normal link rather than the, the Gatsby, uh, uh, like Gatsby router link. Uh, so the first thing that we'll need to do, um, like I mentioned, I'm using GraphQL to query all my markdown files, uh, it essentially loops through all of these posts and then gives us the data that we need. A couple of the pieces that I will need to grab from the front matter that we aren't grabbing right now or the layout and the publisher and what else layout publisher and the URL 
So once we grab these things, that should be all that we need to um, link to the external post. So I'll save that. It's probably going, is it gonna error out? No, okay, good. So we should be getting those things. Let's just do a quick check and output the uh, node front matter uh, URL just to see if we're getting anything back. Oops, clicked on something. Sweet, so you can see that um, this front matter essentially acts as optional. So all of these other posts uh, don't have the publisher or the URL um, front matter, and that's okay. They don't need it. It doesn't error out. They're just not there, essentially like returning null or undefined or whatever, uh, which is just fine. So you can see that on our uh, actual external post, we are getting the URL that we defined in the markdown file. So that's good. Uh, so we're getting data back. We're getting exactly what we need. Um, I'm just going to assume that layout and publisher and are, are also working. So from here, um, pretty much all we need to do is write out a conditional that, um, that outputs either the normal route, like Gatsby link, or just a normal anchor tag. So we'll do this, and there, there might be a better way to do this a little bit more dynamically rather than having to define all of this internal stuff here. Um, honestly, I could probably break this out into a component, like its own little component that I import into here. I'm gonna save that for another time and we're just gonna kind of keep this nice and nice and short and concise. So I'll just use a fairly straightforward uh, React conditional. I always forget how to write these correctly the first time, so let's see if I can, uh, let's see if I can get it. So if the node front matter layout is equal to uh, post, just a normal post, then we will output this whole routed link here. And let me close that conditional. Uh, we can save this and we'll probably see our other post go away. Great. I did write it correctly the first time. That's, don't get that very often. Awesome. Uh, cool. So that is correct. This is going to be nice and straightforward here. So node. So now we're going to detect if the layout is a um, post external. Layout is post external. Then we will do this. Uh, I'm essentially just going to copy and paste this whole component here. And uh, instead of a full link, we're going to convert this to just a normal old anchor tag that has a target of blank. Uh, and for security purposes, I'm gonna, I know. Uh, I think that anytime target blank, no opener, no refer. Um, I think this is the proper way to make sure that everything, there's no like exploits or whatever. Do, 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 real no opener, no refer, should be added to links can turn it, yeah. Um, yeah, from a, from a security standpoint, we'll just make sure that this is no opener, no refer. Turn blank, rail, uh, let's move these, oops. This is just a personal preference here, but we'll move these to the very beginning of the element. Uh, and then instead of two, that's a Gatsby router thing. Uh, this is just gonna be an href. And instead of the slug, because we're not actually generating any of the, uh, we're not generating this as its own individual post, and we don't want to link to that empty, gross looking post, we want to link to the external uh, CSS, CSS tricks post itself. 
uh, we are going to just use the node uh, front matter URL. So we're detecting the layout. If it's post external, just convert this to a, a normal anchor tag and then output the normal post stuff. I guess we could try because is it okay? Let's just see how this works. Many ways to include CSS and Java. Okay, cool. So that is the proper uh, title. Let's see when we click, opens in a new tab, goes to the post. That's perfect. Nice and easy. Uh, so we're not outputting the um, the publisher anywhere. So I wanted to essentially expand on this date a little bit and say uh, something like published on this date. Now let's, because that's going to be a little redundant. Published, you know, 8th of July, 2019 on node front matter publisher published 8th of July 2019 on CSS tricks awesome why does that oh it's probably because I don't have I'm curious why there's a there's a an underline on this and not to the rest of them it should only appear on hover. Let's look at my haphazard app styles here. Do, 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 do. So on hover and focus, we've got a text decoration underline. The date, let's post date text decoration none. Do I have that? <laughs> it was is probably because I had that focused for some reason. Yeah, that was the case. Okay, just me being silly. All right, great. Uh, cool, so published 8th of July 2019 on CSS tricks. So it's pulling all that information from the front matter. It opens this up in a new tab. That's great. Uh, we probably want some kind of indication as well uh, that this is an external link. So let me grab a SVG. Let's just look at font awesome real quick. Uh, external link. Here we go. Just a nice, simple, yeah, external link. Uh, I'll make sure to provide credit to Font Awesome here in the code. Do, do, do. We'll just open this and grab the SVG and paste it right in here. These things are nested very deep, and there are a lot of tabs to get it in the right place. Um, cool. Do, do, do. So we don't need any of the data attributes here. Um, this doesn't need any like alt text or anything because this is pure. Well, actually, no, because this is, this is actually indicating something. We do probably want to add some sort of title to this SVG. Um, external link. Um, just to let screen readers know that, hey, this uh, thing that you're clicking on, this icon represents an external link. Um, Cool. Yeah, just to be safe there. Um, it'll be worth it to, to test in an actual screen reader what this uh, sounds like. Because I think I think some screen readers will be able to, like, if it is a target blank or something like that, um, they may announce that it is a uh, going to open a new window uh, or a new tab, something like that. Uh, so we'll just make sure that this isn't, like, super redundant and annoying from a screen reader perspective here. Uh, so we've got that there for now. Um, uh, once before I actually deploy this, I'll add the proper credits to Font Awesome uh, for this icon, where they say here, must give appropriate credit and provide a link to the license. So we'll just do that in a little 
comment here. Uh, that's not going to render anywhere. Can I add a comment that'll actually show up in the, in the markup? Because that is just going to put text on the, yeah, on the page, right? Oh, that is something that I needs to figure out. But for now, uh, icon, oops, do it in the actual comment, icon credit to font awesome, and the license there. Um, I'll make sure that I actually get this to output properly here so it shows in the code. Uh, cool. So we've got the credit, uh, we've got the icon, we've got a title that we will test here in a moment. Uh, that obviously looks terrible, so we want to add a width and height to this sucker. So we'll just do like 32, uh, 32. Just keep it nice and small. I obviously put this in the incorrect place. We want this near the title. Cool. Perfect. Let me widen that just a little bit. Cool. Um, let's add a little bit of style to that here as well. Uh, so I've got some post title styles here. We'll just add post title uh, SVG. And just add a little bit of margin. We'll do one rim. And that should be good. That doesn't look terribly centered though, does it? No. So let's add a class uh, to this span that isn't one of the actual layout classes. Um, and we'll just call this. So we've already got post title somewhere here, don't we? Post title. Yeah, so we've already got the post title class. Um, I suppose we could just use this post title class and then target the LH copy class. We'll just do that for now. Post title, LH copy. Um, and I'm just going to vertically center this icon so that it looks a little better. We'll just display flex, align items, center. And that should get us nice and aligned there. Perfect. Uh, and when I have, I have my theme switcher here too. Cool, it just changes the color of the SVG uh, depending on the color of the header. Great, uh, nice and centered, aligned. It announces that it's an external link. Click it, it opens a new tab. That is solid. What did I change here? Okay, there we go. Cool, so that should be about all that we need. Uh, let's here. Let's open up NVDA. Oh, hold on. I don't think that's actually playing through my down combo. Okay. Okay. Volume. Volumes. C. Center. Okay. okay. So you should okay. hear. Domonify.co in private Microsoft Edge dev. The now let's see. So the purpose of all this, let's just see how it announces that SVG, right? So if I'm keyboard navigating and I tab. Dark button. About. Resume link. The many ways to include CSS in JavaScript applications heading level 2 published July 8, 2019 on CSS tricks link. Okay, so it's not announcing that this is an external link. Basic ES6 vanilla G. Browse. Ba dumb. Okay, so give me. Problem. Visual. Filter. Let's no, turn no, that on. NVDA. Real quick. Oh, dumb. Okay, uh, so it's not announcing that. So the better way to go about this rather than just a title within the SVG may be to add an actual ARIA label um, to this. 
Uh, but we're not ever going to focus on the SVG itself. Rather, we're going to be targeting the, uh, the anchor tag, right? So let's do, do, do. How do we want to properly do this? Because if we were to just add an aria label to the anchor tag and just say external link, um, I wonder if that's going to override like the heading and stuff in there. Let's find out. So let's go back to NBDA. Prepare to have Welcome him yell at you. Oh, oh, basic, the many ways to. All right, so we focus. Resist external link link. Yeah, so that overrides the H2. So we definitely Run, don't no, want to do that. One Docker desk and and close that out. Uh, let's see here. Better way to do this. Uh, potentially through like an aria labeled by. Oh, well, part of the reason here is that the aria hidden on this SVG was true. So <laughs> that's going to prevent it from being read at all. So let's give a, another shot. Oh, in, in Domonify, the many, the many ways to include CSS in JavaScript applications. Resu the many ways to include CSS in JavaScript applications heading level 2 published July 8, 2019 on CSS Tricks link. Okay. Run, so, so one of dot NVDA, exit, domonindex.jsmagnificode.gethub.iowsm. Greater blank e blank e, greater blank e at e k save that and see domonify dot click res the many ways to include CSS in JavaScript applications external link graphic heading level two published July eighth, two thousand and nineteen on CSS tricks link. Perfect. Running, so running, now we have net, the screen reader. No, no, one uh, doc, and, and, actually, and, and, exit and oh. Now we have the screen reader actually reading out the title for that SVG. So it's nice and accessible. Um, folks know that it's an external link. Uh, this icon is describing the type of link. So we definitely want to make sure that a screen reader announces that to anyone uh, using the screen reader. And I believe that with that, we should be good. So this was just a fairly quick uh, little stream video, whatever, uh, to kind of show you that process. Um, this, is, this is a fairly common uh, Gatsby setup, I believe. Uh, lots of people, especially folks who, like me, transition from Jekyll to a Gatsby site, um, lots of folks seem to use this uh, layout method uh, with like the markdown files and using GraphQL to have Gatsby uh, kind of loop through all those GraphQL fi or sorry, uh, markdown files and then output uh, the content pretty much like you would with Jekyll just using uh, Gatsby, which I do personally much prefer. Uh, so yeah, that was uh, nice and quick. But um, yeah, I think we're going to call it there. I'm going to uh, deploy this to my, my production portfolio so you can see the actual code. Um, I do have uh, my portfolio site up on GitHub as well. Uh, so you can take a look at the uh, code there uh, if you uh, if you so desire. But uh, yeah, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching the video and uh, we'll talk to you later.